Have you ever noticed that the PC building community is very opinionated? Have you ever been a part of any online discussions related to computer tech, whether it be forums, subreddits, Twitter, YouTube comments, you'll know. We're some of the most passionate creatures on the planet when it comes to our glorified rainbow boxes. And I guess now metal boxes with wood trim, whatever it may be, these devices that let us watch cat videos and argue with each other over the internet. And I guess on some occasions play games. When it comes to being a content creator, I think it's in our nature to have strong opinions, whether it be popular or not. In this video, I've gathered some of your favorite content creators in the space to share with you our and controversial opinions. We've got an awesome lineup for you, so let's get right into it. Water coolers are dumb. AIOs, dumb. And I'm gonna stop recommending them going forward in my videos because they're just simply impractical for gamers. One, they're really expensive. Two, you're gonna have to replace them either way in three to five years because something is going to fail. Three, visually, they're gonna become outdated because some new fancy schmancy AIO with like the latest LCD screen and RGB effects is gonna soon replace the old one. And you're gonna feel out of date because you got that cooler for the aesthetics and not for the performance, which is the whole reason why you get an aftermarket cooler. And fourth, you can still hear the pump. It doesn't matter how quiet that AIO is, you're still gonna hear water flushing in every time you turn on and use that PC. Unlike an air cooler, which is so simple. It's just an aluminum heat sink with two fans plugged straight into your motherboard and that's it. And they're way cheaper, don't require any maintenance, and better yet, if there's no RGB on it. And that thing can last for life. So going forward, I'm just gonna use air coolers in all my PC build guides, even for gamers, because realistically, they're gonna cool just as good as any water cooler, especially for gaming. So I'm gonna do that for all my PC build guides going forward. What's up, nerds? I'm Brayathorn, the pre-built guy. And my PC building hot take is this. For gamers, the only benchmark that matters is enjoyment. Hear me out. I've been a tech content creator for a few years now, but before that, I was a viewer just like you. Even though I'd been building PCs for decades, I still relied on review videos to figure out what PC hardware I should spend my hard-earned money on. I remember the feeling of looking at the hardware at the top of the charts and how disheartening it felt to know that I'd never be able to afford that for my own rig. Well, I'm here to tell you that in the big picture, those charts don't matter. I think that for actual buyers, the best hardware is whatever you can actually get or maybe even what you already have. Remember, the most popular GPU on the Steam hardware survey is usually an entry-level card like the NVIDIA RTX 3060, and only about 3% of Steam users game at 4K, more or less. You don't have to overspend to have a great time gaming. To be clear, I do feel that benchmarking content is important. The massive corporations that make PC hardware need to be held accountable for things like marketing lies or overcharging for minimal price to performance increases from one generation to the next. Just don't get too caught up in trying to get whatever's at the top of the charts. Now, if you're trying to figure out what you should buy, whether it's a pre-built PC or a parts list for a DIY build, feel free to check out my PC matchmaking streams where I help viewers one-on-one -on, -one on Tuesdays and Thursdays at around 8 p.m. Central. I'll see you then. And uh, Danny, Thanks for letting me be part of this. Hey guys, Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and here is our hot take. There is no such thing as a bad PC component. Let us explain. So what Matt means by this is that every PC component has its place, especially if it's a good price. And even if it's not a great price, there are a lot of different use cases that are far beyond just the value proposition of a PC. For example, one we get a lot of heat for is the 3056 gig. The low profile variant is absolutely awesome for upgrading office PCs, and it's really not a better option on the market right now that is brand new. That is a great use case, while be it not the best price performance, it does have a place in the market. Another example is budget motherboards and budget power supplies. Just because they're cheaper doesn't mean that they don't have a place in the market or a use case. You just have to know what you're buying. And that's what we love to do here at the Toasty Bros. We don't discredit PC hardware just because of its initial price. We always give it a chance in certain use cases to find its place in the market. Hey guys, I'm Christina from PG Tech and my PC building hot take is that the price to performance ratio does not matter if your PC is freaking ugly. Now, I understand the concept of ugly is subjective to some people. I mean, some people love the Noctua brown color aesthetic and some people think it's super ugly. But I guess what I'm trying to say is if you want to spend 50, 100 or even more on aesthetic upgrades to make your PC look nice, by all means, go for it. 
It's your gaming setup. It's something you're gonna look at if you're like me for 10 to 12 hours a day. A lot of people do spend extra money on nice home decor and even furniture because it's something that they look at every day around their house. And if it's gonna make you feel better, like it is worth the money. Now that's not to say you should go buy generations old hardware just so you can fit that NCXT Kraken AIO with the LCD <laughs> into your build list. But if you do wanna spend an extra couple bucks on a white GPU or some custom cables, or that Yestin Soccer GPU, by all means, it's something you're gonna look at every day. Who cares what the price of performance is? Because when you look at that PC on your desk, it's gonna spark joy. At least mine does. Hi everyone, Greg Salazar here from the YouTube channel after my own name, and my PC hot take is that Case Airflow is overrated. Had to make sure Gamers Nexus Steve wasn't back there. Folks take this to such an extreme today. And I always respond with the same thing. If you want the best airflow for your components, don't use a case. Don't use one at all. An open air chassis is gonna give you the best results, period. I know so many folks, even personally, who have spent days, sometimes weeks, dicing up the small temperature deltas for any random CPU, GPU combo out there. They'll watch 15 reviews on the same case, only to conclude that the two degrees Celsius jump in CPU temps isn't worth it over this other case that, uh, well, aesthetically looks worse, but has better CPU temperatures. I don't think that makes any sense at all. If you're sweating two degrees Celsius, again, my friends, don't build in a case at all. Use an open air test bench, just stick with the fans and the graphics card shroud and the CPU cooler you're using. That should be all you need. I would even stick my neck so far out as to say that five degrees Celsius is not a big deal. If you're sweating 80 degrees versus 85 degrees and you're calling the 85 degree chassis a hot box, my friends, that is not a hot box. I could show you one. It's gonna result in temperature deltas much higher than that. Hey there, my name is Jason and I am the titular host from the Jason Whitmer Tech YouTube channel. And my hot take is do not blindly follow what content creators tell you. Now, I know that seems bad because I'm a content creator myself, but just, you know, just hear me out. In the world of YouTube, unfortunately, what sells is negativity. People are just less likely to watch a video about a product that is just good or even just okay. But if you make a frowny face in the thumbnail and you put something like waste of sand or company is finished or whatever, well, more people are gonna click on it. But what you guys need to understand is that this is all part of the game. If you own a product that creators have described as waste of sand, please don't feel discouraged. Don't feel like you made the wrong decision or that it's not even worth using because that's just entirely not true. Just remember you're watching this stuff because you want to use the hardware that you purchased. And as long as that hardware is allowing you to do what you want to do with it, which is usually playing the games that you love, then just keep doing you and avoid the negativity. And that also means you should ignore me and, and everyone else in this video, frankly. All we can do is give you our thoughts. And if you agree or disagree with it, that's awesome because that means you took in all of the information you needed and you made your very own opinion on it. And, and please stop parroting what creators say in the YouTube comment section. Do you know how many times I have to see this over and over and over? Make up your own thoughts, okay? I'm Zach from Zach's Tech Turf. Thank you, Danny, for the invite. And my hot take is that the Height Y70 Touch case is not worth it, like, at all. Now, don't get me wrong, that screen is definitely beautiful, and I'm all about the aesthetics over everything mindset. But after taxes and shipping for some, the case costs over $400. The Height Y70 doesn't even come with fans, a PWM, or RGB hub like some cases do that cost a quarter of that price. The vertical GPU mount is solid, and I like how it's pre-installed, but that and the screen don't warrant the $400 price tag. Unless you already max out everything else inside your build, I wouldn't recommend spending that kind of money on a non-performance part. What's up everyone? For those of you who are new here, I'm Danny, AKA Nerd on a Budget, and my PC building hot take is that the PSU tier list has made people way more afraid of power supplies than they should be. Don't get me wrong, I love the tier list. It's an awesome resource that consolidates a lot of great info. And by the way, did you know the community over at ZTT started a new version they plan to keep updated? But since the tier list was created years ago and became very popular over time, people have started to take it as gospel with no nuance. They look at the tier list and deem anything not like A or B tier questionable. Anything else to them has a good chance of frying your system or exploding and burning your house down. They don't even look at the grading criteria, which is made readily available on any of these lists. They just look at the big font on the front page and take it at face value. Oh, it says low end? That sounds bad. These must be bad. 
Look, I know it takes a lot of time and effort to put the tier list together and to keep it updated. This is in no way directed at the creators or anybody who helps manages it. This is directed at the people who take a look at the tier list, think that they're now all of a sudden Power Spy experts and um, actually others for their PSU choices just because it may be a little bit cheaper or lower on the tier list but are otherwise perfectly safe. Anyways, that's my hot take. Now excuse me as I go and finish off a build with this EVGA 600 watt W1. Hey all, I'm Chris from Coalition Gaming and this is my PC building hot take. Stop worrying so much about bottlenecks. I've noticed a trend over the last few years of people being obsessed with bottlenecks when talking about PC builds or upgrades. This is not a good trend. If someone is looking at a mid-range GPU like a 3060 Ti or 7600 XT and are coming from an older CPU, let's say a Ryzen 7 2700, they will stick themselves into a loop as time goes on if they only buy a current product that supposedly gives them the least bottleneck. A Ryzen 5 3600 will be a sensible upgrade for that level of GPU, but so would a 5600X. Some bottleneck nerd might come in and say a 5700XUD is too much CPU for that level of GPU, or if you were looking at a platform change because you wanted to go AM5 for future upgrades, that same bottleneck nerd will tell you not to do that, at least not without also upgrading the GPU. And then you get stuck in this non-stop loop of upgrading little by little to keep bottleneck at a minimum. I've been building gaming PCs for 22 years. Not once have I worried so much about bottlenecks that it's affected my part choices. Bottlenecking is only really a problem if you're pairing extremes, like a 4090 and a Celeron. Nobody does that for their daily driver gaming PC. It's something you only see for reference and testing purposes. In the end, buy the best parts you can afford and you'll see that bottlenecking isn't as big of a problem as this dumb trend has led people to believe. Hello, my name is David. I do tech stuff and thank you very much Danny for including me in this thinly veiled attempt to have a bunch of tech YouTubers cancel themselves. My hot take is that I think the whole communal outrage around no graphics cards having enough video memory is kind of overblown. Don't get me wrong, Nvidia shouldn't be cheaping out on memory configurations and graphics cards because there's clearly a demand for it, but I keep seeing comments on videos along the lines of this graphics card doesn't have 24 gigs of video memory on it, what an outrage. I mean, in most most of the testing that I do at 1440p, games barely use more than 7.5 gigs of video memory. Sure, if you're running The Last of Us with a 7800 XT in there, it's gonna use 14 gigs of video memory, but cards with much less video memory in it still run the game very well. And in my opinion, the fact that some outlier games use 14 gigs of video memory is more an indictment of video game optimization than it is a statement that every graphics card needs 800 gigs of video memory. So with that, fight me down below. I agree with David. Yeah, I'm gonna say I agree with David. I'm with David on this one. I agree with David on this one. I'm never gonna turn down more free VRAM. I don't think anyone would, but we know they're not giving it away for free. And sometimes they're giving it in weird configurations like the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti. Who wanted that? But anyways, on to the next one. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Tech by Matt, and my hot take is that I don't care how a budget graphics card, say anything $300 or less, pairs with the most high end CPU. Now, before you start angrily typing, take your fingers off the keyboard. I want to preface this by saying I do understand the purpose of doing it that way in terms of eliminating bottlenecks and being able to compare graphics cards across the entire stack from low to high end. With that being said, I do think it's more valuable to see how those cards compare with CPUs that people are actually going to be pairing with them. And this is because I think that pairing a budget GPU with a high-end CPU is gonna give some consumers an unrealistic expectation of what kind of performance they're gonna get from that card. And more importantly, I think it over-exaggerates the performance difference between cards in that specific class point. And as we saw with the recent B580 launch, there is a lot of value in pairing these cards with more realistic pairings in terms of CPUs so that we can see what kind of performance most people are going going to actually get when buying and using these cards. So yes, I do understand why budget GPUs are paired with high-end CPUs for testing. It's just that I much more prefer them paired with a much more realistic CPU that people are actually going to be pairing those cards with in the real world. Hey Danny, thanks for having me on. For those who might not know, I am Jeff with Craft Computing. Now, my PC gaming hot take is a bit of a spicy one, but I'm pretty sure that's why you asked me on, right? Love it or hate it, AI upscaling technologies like DLSS and FSR are here to stay. 
Rather than leaning on traditional rasterization, we're going to see both game developers and hardware manufacturers continue to utilize AI upscaling to help increase performance in games. While newer graphics cards are definitely still faster than previous generation ones, we're seeing more and more focus from GPU makers on the AI sides of their cards. And while the RTX 5090 is head and shoulders faster at rasterization and ray tracing than any other GPU that's ever been made, that's also not the whole story anymore. Raster performance is always going to be important, but there's also a growing gap between the haves and the have-nots when it comes to graphics performance, and perhaps more importantly, visual quality. GPU performance can no longer be measured solely by how many frames can go burr. There's new factors with AI upscaling that are going to dramatically impact visual quality, and that quality is going to vary not only between GPU vendors, but on a card-by-card -card basis even within the same series and generation of GPUs. Better quality and faster rasterization means better input for AI upscaling, which directly equates to better output both in terms of speed and visual quality. That's also going to make things increasingly subjective on our side of the equation as reviewers. Visual quality matters, and is going to be different on a card-by-card -card basis when it comes to AI upscaling. And it's not like we can just ignore DLSS and FSR either, as many games at 1440p and ultra settings are barely able to hit 60 frames per second, even on the RTX 5070 or RX 9070. The good news in all of this is at this point, DLSS and FSR are good enough that they're basically free performance, and you really shouldn't be afraid or even disgusted by having to turn them on. And just know that every reviewer hates the unavailability and high prices of graphics cards just as much as you do. We're all enthusiasts. We got into doing reviews because we're enthusiasts. And the fact that no one can find graphics cards or afford graphics cards puts a damper on everything. I guess what I'm trying to say is good luck out there. And thanks again, Danny, for having me on. Hate to be such a downer, and I hope things get better soon. Cheers, everyone. What's going on, everyone? It's Ozzy from Oslox Hardware, and sorry that I'm not in my usual <laughs> setup right now. I'm out of the country. But here are my, or here is my PC hot take. I think wood accent cases are kind of tired and tacky right now. I do think that when manufacturers design them intentionally, they still look really good and they can add a lot of sophistication to your setup, like the Fractal Design North. But when it's just to hop on a trend and more of an afterthought than an intentional design, it looks pretty bad, like the Corsair 6500X. And I think this was just a reaction from the whole RGB mess that we had in the 2010s. And we've kind of swung the opposite direction into this like very uh, muted, natural wood tones color. And I still think it looks good, but I really want more expressive cases again that are different, that have lots of color, that have lots of personality, like the Thermaltake Tower 600 series. Those absolutely love them. But anyway, that's my hot take, just my opinion. Let me know if you disagree or agree. There you have it. The PC building hot takes from some of your favorite content creators. Is anyone's blood boiling out there after watching this? Did we trigger some people? If so, now is the time for all of you out there to let us know down in the comments which hot takes did you disagree with and which ones did you agree with? If it wasn't mentioned in this video, what's your most passionate hot take? But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I wanna give a huge thanks to all my fellow creators for participating in this. Everybody's super busy, so for them to be able to take time out of their busy schedules to join in on something that little old me put together, I am truly grateful. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. Huge thanks to the channel members for their above and beyond support. Be safe out there and we will see you all down in the comments as well as on our respective channels when we drop our next content pieces. Bye.